Okay, so in the last video, we modified some text in CodePen. Now we're going to add a video and a few pictures to the CodePen as well. So we'll type in codepen.io. I'll go to my profile. And I've got the killer whale pen right there. So first and foremost, we want to add a video. So I'm going to minimize the CSS section right now. And I want to put a video right beneath this text. Click at the end of the H1 element and press enter. If your students are not allowed to use YouTube, you'll probably want to disregard this section. But if you're interested in coding, please just know that YouTube makes it very easy to embed videos to your code. So we'll open up a new tab. We'll type in YouTube. And then we'll look for anything related to killer whales. An apex predator, BBC documentary, killer whales, wolves of the sea. I've actually seen this and it's an hour long. I'm gonna click on this right now. Okay, I've got the killer whale video up and even though it's 57 minutes long, I'm still gonna add it to my code pen. We'll go ahead and we'll hit this share button right here. You got a few different options, the first of which is embed, and you should see the brackets that we use in HTML all the time. So we got to click on this button. And then it says embed video, and it gives us this code right here that starts with iframe and ends with close iframe. I'm going to highlight it all. Control C. And I go back into my killer whale code pen page. I'm right beneath my text. I'm going to hit Control V. I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit. And now my video has been added to my web page. So I can add any video that I want. If you'll notice though, my video is not centered. So we centered our text by in our CSS by using text align center, but that is that text align center is not affecting our video. Centering video and pictures is a little bit more involved than simply centering text. So this is a good time to walk your students through this. Right now we have a link that references the font that is modifying our text right there. So I'm gonna press enter and I'm on line three right now. So I'm gonna use what's called a div. I'm gonna do the less than bracket div and I'm gonna put the end right there. So I got div right there. Since I have an open div there, I need to go down beneath all my code and I have to close my div. That's what this little hash means. So now all of my code is housed within a div right here. And you can have as many divs as you'd like in any web page. What this is essentially doing is putting all this code inside a box. And that box is my div. I'm going to call this ID equals center all. And this is letting me know that I'm going to center all of this. So right now it's all the way to the left. And this div starts here and ends right here. So in my CSS, when I call my div, an ID is represented with a hashtag or a number sign. So I'm going to put hashtag, which means ID. You just got to memorize this. Hashtag is center all. So now when I call ID center all, this is going to apply to all of this code inside this div. So I call my center all and I'm going to add my squiggly bracket and I press enter to split them up. So the line of code I'm going to use is this exact same thing. Text align center. Text align center. When I put that in, I notice my video shifts slightly. I'm going to zoom out a bit so you can see the video is now centered on the page. So now that you see the result of that, I'm going to take this out so you can see how it was. So it was all the way to the left. And when I add that piece of code, text align center, it then centers everything. So that's how you can center your web page. You just need to make sure you explain to your students that this div is basically a box. And whatever we tell this box to do, it's going to do on this side of the screen. So now we've got our video centered. If we want to add pictures now, we just need to make sure that we add it in between these divs. 
So I'm going to enter down, and I've got this div here, the open, and this div here, the close. I'm going to put some pictures between these two divs after the video, and let's see what happens. So I'm going to type in my picture code, img src equals, and I've got double quotes. I'm going to copy and paste that, control C, control V, control V. I'm going to have three pictures. Okay, so this is going to look a little funky, and I'm going to hit save right now. This is going to look a little weird because all of my pictures are going to be different sizes, but I'll show you how to fix that after we get them added. So I'm going to go ahead and look up killer whale pictures right now. I'm going to go to images, and I like this one. So this is 1920 by 1080. This is a huge picture. I right click or with a Chromebook two finger click copy image address. I'm going to paste that right here and watch how big it is. Yeah, it's huge. Okay. So now I'm going to look at a different one. I like this one right here, 750 pixels. So I'm going to copy image address. And I'm going to paste it between these two right here. So there's the code for that picture. Now I've got a big picture and another big picture. And then we'll get one more. I like this one. Two finger click or right click, copy image address, killer whale. I'm going to paste it in the last one that I have here, control V. And now if I zoom out, here's what I have. I have a bunch of different sized pictures. So with our CSS, when we wanted to apply things to the text, we used h1 because our text is in the h1 right there. When we wanted to center all and everything, we used everything that was in this div with the ID of center all. So now we want all of our pictures to be the same size. And right now, all pictures are using the IMG code. IMG. So I'm going to call IMG in my CSS. So I'll say IMG squiggly brackets and now I can say width let's put the width of each picture to like 60 px and see what happens so now they're all really small let's change it to 100 px so now they're all 100 pixels long see they're all the exact same width if I wanted to make sure they were all the same height I could say height is going to be 80 pixels let's see and see how they're a little stretched. And this is just now becomes a balancing act of which, how do you want them to look? So that actually looks pretty good. So now I have some modified text. I have a video and I have three pictures. If I really wanted to make this look nice and make my video exactly as long as my pictures, I know that each picture is 120 pixels wide. So if I multiply that by three, that gives me 360 pixels total. So I need to make sure my video is right around 360 pixels. I'll need to account for the white space. So I'll go to my video code. And right now it's 560 pixels long. Let's see what happens if I put 380. So what's going on now is my picture is right next to my video. To prevent that from happening, I'm going to put a break, like a space, between my video and my picture. So here is my video, everything with the iframe. Here is my first image. In between the two of them, I'm going to put a less than bracket, a BR, and close that. So now this BR puts a space between them. So my video is 380 pixels long. You can see it's just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to put 370 just to see. Getting getting close. And let's do 368. Close, 364. Okay. It's pretty close. So it's a little bit off right there. 
And my height, I don't like how it's kind of weird. So I'm gonna put 280 right now. Looks a bit better, we'll do 260. So you can start making your web pages look very, very orderly and organized. Not too difficult to do. You'll probably have to slow this lesson way down and do it a few times. And once again, the yellow bar right here, I need to hit save so that when I go into my profile, I can now see the page that I've made. My video is not showing up. I wonder why that is. Okay, it's showing up there. But so yeah, we've made a web page about killer whales now. We've added a video and multiple pictures, and we've adjusted the sizes on all of them.